Hi, I'm Stephanie and this is my home, the 16th century Chateau de Lalande. Lalande was owned for hundreds of years by a family of marquises who were at the heart of French royal life. One of them even had the honour of being sent by King Louis XV to greet Marie Antoinette on her arrival in France. But, far from being a stuffy museum, this chateau is a living home. I live here all the time and I'm regularly joined by my mother, my family, my friends and wonderful volunteers from all over the world who help me to lovingly restore this historic home. Welcome to La Lande, a chateau filled with life, love and laughter. Hello and welcome to Sundays at the Chateau, where today you will notice we are not at the Chateau de Lalande because this is a video that I've been very, very excited to make for years. I'm finally going to be able to share my favorite hotel in France with you. It's called La Mirande and we're in the beautiful city of Avignon in the south of France. It's a very ancient city dominated by the world's largest Gothic palace, which was once home to seven popes when the papacy moved here from Rome for nearly a hundred years in the 14th century. During that time, this building was the Palace of the Cardinal and it used to host sumptuous banquets for over a hundred guests with trumpeters heralding in the arrival of the food and fountains of wine. The beautiful facade was added in the 17th century, but behind that unified front, all of the rooms were being changed bit by bit over the centuries and most had been stripped of their original decoration by the time Akim and Hannelore Stein, a German couple, bought this beautiful building to bring it back to life in 1987. And today I have the enormous pleasure of having a private tour around the hotel with their son, Martin Stein, who abandoned medicine to devote his life to the restoration of this historic monument. This hotel encapsulates for me everything that a hotel should be because it transports you not only to another place but to another time, to another way of seeing the world, to another way of living. Welcome to La Mirande. I'm very excited to meet you. This is Mr. Stein, who is the owner of this hotel, and you actually did a lot of the design work here. Mm, yes, yes <laughs> I, I, we had a very talented, um, then young uh, interior architect from Paris. The Steins worked with the distinguished French interior designer, François-Joseph Graff, who's even been an architect at the Chateau de Versailles. He produced the initial designs for the transformation of this building. And Martin rose to the challenge of taking those initial designs and turning them into technical drawings for local craftsmen. 
if you add them all together, there must be one kilometer of wood paneling which I have <laughs> designed. So you have to always, it's interesting, you have to, to see how to distribute the big panels and the small panels. Yes. The grand cadre and the petit cadre, the French grand cadre is when, when, these, when the cadre goes out of the, of, of the, this is the grand cadre. Oh, this is the, the petit cadre. which goes so in. Here, I didn't know that. Always the alternates, the grand cadre with the petit cadre. Well, I've learned and something new today. When you start, you have to think how much grand cadre and how much Petit cadre, I take the less you put in, the larger they are, and so mm. to give them the right, the right feel of proportion. We very much visited other houses in mm. Armenia. We did take the exact measurements. You see, you have here a good example of the of the 17th or 18th century um, uh, molding. Molding, and um, the carpenter would say, well. You don't, you don't need to do that because it's as beautiful if you go straight here and you don't have to go in here because, it's, because that will make it feel much more difficult to make that. Yes. And also because there's a lot of paint on these when you go in, a, in an old house mm. and they say, well, look, it's, it's, there's nothing there, we can make it straight. But then you, when you start to scratch it and you take out all the paint, you see that you originally that it was, was much yes. more nerv nervous, mm. these things, which we did and we gave the cabin the, the exact form it should have. Mm. So they could not cheat or make it, uh, <laughs> make it wrong. So it's really, it's really yes. um, the, the, the old way. So it's, it's, um, it's beautiful. Th it took us three years roughly to, to, do this, to do this transformation. Three years. But later on we added, uh, we, 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 we finished other things later, but uh, the beginning to open the hotel was three years of, of I'm of honestly work. so ashamed when I think that I've been at La Lande for 15 years and what you've done here is so beautiful. Uh, I was speechless when I came in because I absolutely believed that it had looked pretty much like that since the 18th century, with you adding lovely curtains and furniture mm. and paper, but mm. it didn't, did it? No. Mm. This room was not decorated because it was the cabinet of a doctor. Yes. And the oldest son was a physician who would inherit everything. So, so but rules changed in the 20th century, so there were two, 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 two sons, both doctors, who shared the place. and. Um, and one had this cabinet here, and it was white tiles, and uh, so we had to completely redecorate the place. And, this room uh, was just yeah. white tiles. I can't grasp it. So from the ceiling to the floor, everything is, has been brought in 30 years ago. So it's um, an example of how, how you can still recreate these ambiences if you have the right craftsmen to, to do it. And, and if you have the vision. Mm. <laughs> well, sometimes if you have one beautiful thing, then it's like, like this, this uh, then it's from, this is a starting, you need a starting point, you need something to start from. Wallpaper is from probably 1750, so it's quite early in the 18th century, um, made in China, and, but the Chinese made them for the European taste, so they were made for export. So, and um, they knew how to make these big layers of paper, it was painted, and um, we could buy these 15 panels from an antique dealer in Paris, and then the, uh, Mr. Graf, who was the interior architect, he designed the room around these panels, and we could fix them all in. We didn't. We would just lose one here in this corner here. So, so. But it's still there. It's behind because there's a lot of space behind in order to hide this. So you were able to they would save be the paper. Able to use it mm. in the future. There was a little, little missing a little um, bit there. And that's where this little tiny part was added, which I'd never noticed, and I've spent quite a lot of time sitting in this room. I always said it would be impossible for me to, to build a beautiful house from scratch if you give it just you, you just, just give a piece of land instead. Of, I wouldn't know how, how to do it yes, because there's a lot yes. too much choice to do it. So yes. it's better to if you have a, an existing house and you have a lot of um, contraint, as they say in French, and then you have to you have to work around these these. Um, my father always said that constraints uh, feed the imagination and help creativity. But yeah. you need constraints to yes. be creative. Very, very indeed. Mm. Oh, it's wonderful. And to think that all of this was put in 30 years ago, all of the mouldings. <laughs> Another thing which is interesting is the idea of, the, of, the, of Mr. Graf was to use fabrics with the reverse side to give them a sort of shabby Yes. Aspect, as if it has been there already, a lot exposed to the sun, mm. there for a long time. This is, is the wrong side of the. Of the oh. If you turn it around, it's it's a, it's a different fabric. Ah, oh, yes, fabric. very interesting. Uh, as well, these are they're much more lively color, um, okay. but as it has been used the reverse side. Oh, that's also the reverse. Yeah.
On this sofa, you see just how powerful it can be to use the reverse side of a fabric. Here, the little cushion is the right side and the rest of the sofa is done in the wrong side. Something which I'm very passionate about is fruitcuff floors mm. and what they say in French, say calpinage. I don't know if calpinage. You know, calpinage? No, I don't know that word. It's the, when you make the plan of the floor, every single piece can have decided about what the size should be and where it should be exactly in order to that the floor speaks with the, the doors and the walls. It's a sort of uh, combination wow. between these. What attention mm. to detail. We have in France, we have a lot of marchand de matériaux anciens. When they te tear down beautiful old houses, unfortunately, mm. they, they call these people and they go in and they, they take everything out, which yes. is interesting. Architectural salvage, we call that yes, in England. Yes, that's that. So we had a lot of... Um, floors from architectural salvage which we used, which we weren't really sure if we would reuse it, but we had them, yes. we could dispose of that. So, so all the floors you see here are architectural salvage floors. So, so um, this is for instance an example of cement tiles, yes. which, are, which are very efficient, I mean, to, to create something interesting. We did uh, take out all the oak Arcades, yes, but then numbered one one by one. You have the cracking sound because they're not put directly on the concrete floor, but there's these, there's these um, little beams which carry them. So as they would have been before. Yeah, it's because mm. we have this, this elasticity which you don't have. Yes, anymore. yes, and the noise is important as well to make you feel you're in an old building. So coherent, you use the word coherence, mm. and to me that's the best description because you absolutely feel as though you're stepping into the 18th century, into a building that was all planned in one single moment, but the, in fact this was built over many hundreds of years, wasn't it? Yes, they have asked the city if they could step onto the public ground to, to build the facade in 1688 in front of existing buildings. So they didn't tear down anything behind. They just they just gave, gave it a sort of coherent aspect towards outside. But yes. inside it was there was no right there was no right angle inside. <laughs> all all, rooms, all wall, walls would go in different directions. So we, and also you had to use a lot of steps to go from one room to the other because all these different buildings behind the facade were from different periods mm. and have been built from the ruins of the Cardinal's Palace, which was here in the 14th century. How did you manage to fix all of that? How did you make it feel so square and straight and elegant? Well, if you have a room which is a tra trapez, trapez like that, yes. then we would, we, would, we would put a wall, we would lose some surface because we would put a wall in here to make it square. Yes. Or rectangular, if you so want. there's little there's little spaces so then behind you can, some of yeah, the walls. and you can put a little wardrobe in the, in the, in the little space or niches to another. You can yes. put the alcove a little bit in the part which is not straight. Yes, uh, which they always did because it was very expensive to tear everything down and to start from scratch. So mm. they used what pre was pre-existing. Symmetry very important in the 18th century. If you have a door on the right side, which you have to have because to go somewhere, you have to put a fake one on the other side so the room mm. would keep its keep its symmetry. And you've symmetry. done that in room 24. Yeah. haven't you because there's a door mm -hmm. that's not a real door opposite the one to the bathroom in our bedroom mummy yes. yes yes in our bedroom this entire door is false well the door is real but it's not leading anywhere it's leading to just a boarded up bit of wall and it's in order to have the symmetry with the door opposite, which was originally here and which leads to the bathroom you can see the same technique used to great effect in bedroom 28 that's the door through which we came into the room and behind me you'll see there's an, another door because in the 18th century in France rooms were always made symmetrical where there was one door there was another door in the same place on the other side 
But this building wasn't at all symmetrical when the Steins bought because it's been added to and changed over the years just as Lalande has been. There was not one single right angle in the entire place. There was no symmetry and they ingeniously put the symmetry back into the building. This is an entirely fake door. Now for people to go to the effort of all of this panelling, all of this carpentry, all of this design work, just to make a fake door, to add symmetry to a room. It's just an incredible eye for detail. So when you come in, you sense that you've just stepped back in time. You've walked into a guest room in somebody's home, in their palace in the 18th century. It's a magical feeling. It's hard to describe the effect that all of this work behind the scenes has on the emotions that you feel in the room. There's a time travel that happens because of work like this. And other than the doors that are used for symmetry to match the existing doors, all other doors are hidden jib doors covered in fabric and with the panelling continuing in front of them. Sometimes you enter the you enter the room through the porte dérobée, which is I don't know what's the English word for that. Is that the hidden hidden, hidden, door, hidden, hidden door, jib door. door? Hidden doors, which you, when it's closed, it disappears. Yes. So we were wondering if guests, when they would use this room, come in late at night, not really realizing what they did to get into the room, would call us the next morning on the telephone and said we can, we cannot open the, <laughs> we cannot open get the door to get out. So. And that's how you keep guests. <laughs> <laughs> you enter the room through a hidden jib door with the panelling continuing across it and the wonderful fabric continuing and the two main doors in the room, one leads to the bathroom and the other is false. There is such attention to detail to make the rooms look original. It's perfect, it's mind blowing. And I love these, I absolutely love these. It feels as though you're going into Narnia. I'm still here. Something I was very struck by was the way you have hung paintings because all of us, Mummy and Hanny who's with us, we've been saying that we're noticing individual paintings more rather than seeing them as uh, part of a decorative oh, whole because they're often closer to eye level for us because we're quite short as well and they're mm -hmm. hanging a little bit lower here. Mm -hmm. And so often I'll turn in a corridor and I'll suddenly see a really fascinating engraving for example right next to me and is it you who decided how to hang the paintings mm. that's my specialty also framing things and uh, i'm using the i'm also using the old glass for which i think is very important old old glass to oh you. really is it because if you have these windows with old glass they sometimes somehow alive yes. so when you when you look from outside it's, it's sort of sh shivering and if you look from inside you have a little bit of um, the landscape or the building opposite is a little bit uh, moving while you when you move like that. Yes. So it's all the new windows have always been equipped with, with, with old glass. How did you get the old glass? For you that? can you can still buy it, which is it's still produced in France. It's a, yes. it's a manufacturer of that. I didn't know that 30 years ago we have made them come from Germany because okay. I didn't know that they were also existing and much better in France. Mm. And uh, because the German glass is a bit too exaggerated. I always say they, they, they do it with the old technique, but they, they make them as unperfect as possible. <coughs> they say, well, in the 18th century, they used the same technique, but they would make them as perfect yes, as possible. Yes, they wanted it to be yeah, perfect. perfect. So it's very thin and beautiful. So I prefer to buy old glass from when I go to antique mm. fairs, like Bocon, you can f yes. often find engravings which are, which are all completely rotten because we had got water on it and our relig religious yes. ring and the frames are, are eaten up and no, nobody wants to buy that but the, but the but glass, the, is, but the glass is still when I buy a beautiful engraving and it's modern glass on it takes the modern glass out put the old glass on it so, so isn't that amazing I would never never have thought of it mm. you will certainly adopt that if you see the difference between what does an old glass make with compared to a new glass. So, so. Well, I'm, I'm going to try, because really I've been so struck by all of the art, but also in the windows, I noticed it, um, especially in the upstairs corridor when you're looking down onto the internal sort of patio area. Yeah. 
we talked about the old glass. You see, all this, I, I have all these um, paintings from Théophile Mayon that he painted end of the 19th century, beginning of the 20th century. And um, this thing, nothing was framed. So from there on, I started to, to think about the art of framing. And uh, so we, when I could find old frames also on the, on the, on the book or the antique, where they buy them. This is a reproduction, which is of one of his most successful paintings. He's preparing yes, sketches yes, of, you of, have of, the original of, sketch of, for of it. Yeah. Wonderful. But it's fascinating because you really see his process. Yes. And so this is the old glass that you're using to frame things. I don't know how well it's going to come across on the video, but it's, yeah, there's too much reflection almost to see it on you the can video. See, you can see it's it, you wonderful. Can, you see your, your, your reflection, you can see it. It's, it's, yes, it's yes. Moving when you're it moving. is moving. Mm. It does bring life to them. Mm. Mm. You can see it very strong over there. Right? Yes. Strong. There's a shimmering quality to the glass. Oh, there's another woman on a donkey. Yeah. She's really charming. But that's what I love here. In every tiny corner, there's something to look at. A lot of people wouldn't have put anything in that corner. It's such a tiny little space. And it's beautiful, because you always find things to catch the eye. I don't know what it is about that painting, but I think that's my favourite painting in the entire place. But it's more to do with its placement. There's something about it against that wallpaper. I don't know what, but I spent a lot of time here last night by myself staring at the painting. <laughs> it's Harold Knight. It's an English painter. This is his wife. She was much more famous. Laura Knight ah. is very well known in England for paintings, and he was her husband. In this room, there's another beautiful example of Martin's fascinating way of hanging paintings. They're just directly above the antique commode, far lower than eye level. And somehow, the fact that they're not where you would expect them to be means that you stop and you take the time to look at them. I think if they had just been on the wall, I would have seen it as part of the wall. But here I've really looked at this wonderful man with his strange little beak. It's incredible. You see the beauty of things that you would otherwise walk straight past. And details like this are found throughout this hotel because here it's really about the details. I think that as you come in, everything that your eye rests on has been thought through with perfection in mind. Nothing is throwaway, nothing is left to chance. The entire home has been done by the eye of a genius. One of the extraordinary things in La Mirande is that the corridors are as evocative and beautiful as the bedrooms. They all look down onto a huge central patio area and they're wallpapered in the most glorious way. But then there are flashes of colour here and there with painted walls and there's art hanging everywhere and everything is worth stopping at and taking a closer look at. And I love the way the light pours in through the windows and creates wonderful patterns on the floor. Really, just spending time in the corridor here is a joy. This is just a small section of the corridor and this area has been painted purple. And I think it's one of my favorite wallscapes, if that's a word, one of my favorite views in the entire building because I love the gold and the engravings and this candelabra against the purple. It works so well. And this is certainly something that I will be copying at La Lande because this is something that would be very easy to do in one's own home. You just need a tin of paint and some engravings. I mean, I don't have any quite this beautiful, but I do have nice old engravings that I've been collecting. And I'll find a candelabra. This is something that it's quite easy to do at home, to reproduce. This is opulent. 
The colour feels very opulent, especially with the gold, and yet it has extraordinary simplicity to it as well. And here and there, there are little cabinets bringing together collections of objects. Look at that work with the women. And I love in this room that you've paired this incredibly strongly geometrical floor with these curtains. Yeah, this is, uh, this is Mr. Graf, oh, this is the, 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 the interior decorator. When it come to, came to the end, when we had to choose the fabrics, and this is very much this his input. Yes, to that, so. I think this is very successful. And this is the original fabric is different. Sometimes he did cut out parts from the fabric in order to create new fabrics. Really? There's a big red flower, normally. So in order to create that, you have to here, and, um, and here's the, here. here's yes. the next one. So yes. it's only that, because there's missing, there's missing the red flower. He's in just to taken it. the stripe. Hmm. Wow, I had enough difficulty making my curtains without having <laughs> to do that as well. <laughs> oh, the attention to detail. In the vestibule of the room, you can see a trick that's been used throughout the hotel to great effect, which is that the border of the fabric, which in the bedroom has been used to edge and frame the walls, and it's been used to frame the curtains, in the vestibule has just been attached together repeatedly. So there is a seam here, a seam here, a seam here, a seam here, a seam here to create a stripe. So you have the same fabric, but a different way of using it, which means that although it's unified, each area is slightly different. So it makes it much, much richer. And here's another example of how to produce a new fabric from the main fabric, but, but, but using the border, sewing together yes. all the borders in order to make, to make a smaller size, smaller size pattern for the entrance. Uh, yes. Entrance hall. And somebody has done an absolutely beautiful job of those lines. Yes, a bit like my work. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> when you buy them, you have the full pattern, and on one side you have the border, so you can yes. you can cut off the border, and, or and you can use it you can in use the border way. as a stripe which comes from time to time, or you, yes. can, or you can use the border in order to frame one of the panels. This I love, framing, I framing the wall like that. I beautiful. doubt that there, there was a lot of more fabric needed to have all the borders, because yes. it's, also, it's, it's made with it's made Yes, with the, with the you're borders. using more so, border than fabric yeah. here. Very beautiful. And where is this uh, fabric from? This is Bracagny, which then was, was, was still independent, but now no, it's... Now, um, Pierre Frey. Pierre Frey. This is one of the favorite rooms of our guests because it is quite big. It has the sunshine coming in in the morning and it has some beautiful view into the garden. And the it has everything. You see the beautiful mirror? It's so clever. <laughs> I, I absolutely love the idea. It's wonderful. The floor of the bathroom. So these encaustic cement tiles? Yes. I love those. And lovely wallpapers. These are also old wallpapers. We edited because they have to still, still the older wood blocks. This is a technique which is from the early 19th century. It's not 18th century. So, but as the bathrooms are not really representative of the 18th century, they didn't exist in that mm. way. So we, we, we tried to give it a sort of belle époque, belle époque feel. But using these wallpapers, which would, would somehow be the bridges to the room. This is room number 22, which is covered in a replica of an 18th century fabric. Oh my goodness. Blending. This is another way to use the border, you see. The main motif is there. Then you have the uh, sorted stripe. It's nice because you can use for two rooms something which is uh, from the same family. The smaller stripe has been used to frame this one here. This is a very interesting toy de jouer or Indian. They tried to imitate silk because it has this moiré effect, which you usually only get with silk. They, they have this little shivering effect, which is on the, in, in the design of the fab, of the fabric. Mm. It's a trompe of an of of extremely expensive um, silk, silk fabric. It's fascinating that they wanted to reproduce the effect of silk like that. I'm learning a lot about the use of borders, especially the curtains, which is odd because generally I abhor a vacuum. I like colour on everything. But, no, but this is just 
perfect. Oh, and the small board has been used along exactly. the top as well. And I love the way you created alcoves. Mm, so, was in order to create cupboard space. Exactly, mm. Mm. but it's such a beautiful and intelligent way of creating space. Mm. It truly it's, is lovely. Because it the windows are not symmetrical, but they're not in the axe. No, so, that's right. So you cut off part of the roof. You, oh my symmetry. goodness, oh, I hadn't seen the wallpaper in the oh, bathroom. Oh, this is a, One has to do a double take oh. here. <laughs> They offered us, almost offered it to us because they had, it was a sort of leftover yes. from, from Mundi at the, at the time. And so we said, well, let's, let's use it. Ah, and it's and great. It, it's it works so well. Yeah. It is incredible. I can honestly say I also, I mean, I've seen the Mundi wallpapers like this and I've never considered that I would use them, but I think I'm going to now because I like it so much mm. here. But, and I love the way that there is continuity in, on the palette throughout the room. Yes, yes. yes. I love the fact that it's so unified. Exactly. Look at the view from the bath. The Palais des Papes. All inspiring. Yes, it is. Yes. A bit of, uh, 19. different from all the other rooms because it's more there's more elements from the 19th century and from yes. the early 20th century. We're Edwardian here. We've suddenly yes. moved forward in time. Yes, we are. The fabric is also interesting because it's something which is not from the 18th century, it's 19th century, when, the, when the, they came back into fashion with Napoleon III and his wife, especially Eugenie. She was very much, um, she should be discovered, the Toile de Jouy. And uh, so they mm. started back and he started again to um, create new new fabrics, which uh, this is one of them. But actually, the name of the fabric is Napoleon. Ah. The third. Yes. Mm. For me, it looks like a room in an English country yes. house. It looks like yeah. one of yes. the bedrooms in yes, somebody's yes. country house that yes. they've had for years. And each bedroom has slightly different furniture because they've been collecting it as a family for generations. Yes, it's eclectic, and I do love that. Yes. 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 And again, the over doors are great. Can we look at the bathroom in this one? Thanks. <sighs> oh, it's delightful. And all of the loos in the hotel are hidden away behind secret doors so that the bathrooms are left for bathing. This is room number 28. And I think it's my favorite room because I'm a lover of pattern and color. And it's very hard here to choose a favorite room because they are all so exquisite. But look at this braconnier fabric. It is magnificent. It is an 18th century design from France, but here you can really see the influence of the Indian fabrics that the French were emulating. This is absolutely a spectacular Indian style print. If any of you are interested to learn more about the great history of toiles in France, I will put a link to my vlog about it here. When the factory in Jouy closed down in 1843, Braconnier bought all of the copper plates and the designs, so thankfully many of them are still available today. The way that patterns are mixed together is very, very clever because everything marries well, even though the patterns are very different. But somehow the colours, and this of course is still heavily influenced from India, this is a paisley design, it just all flows together. And I love the way that the border has been used, as it is in so many rooms here, not just to frame each section of wall, but also to edge the curtains. Isn't that beautiful? And in the alcove, they've created this wonderful window seat. Okay, mommy, I'll, I'll just spend uh, an hour or two here, meet you later. No? I don't think I'm going to get away with that. Okay. <laughs> the light switches are also very clever. They're very simple brass push buttons, but they have a perspex plate to protect the fabric. There's a very simple wallpaper with a tiny sprig of flowers being repeated here, which is a wonderful balance to the exuberant pattern in the bedroom. And the bathroom continues this way and the use of a large sheet of mirror 
means it looks as though it continues far more. And hello, my lovely camera woman. <laughs> <laughs> this beautiful room is number 29. Here the cushion is made out of the same fabric as the fabric on the walls. It's strange because you would think that two large bold prints would really clash with one another. But in fact, putting it on that chair just creates this symphony of colour and pattern. All of the bedrooms have writing desks. And who wouldn't want to sit here and write a proper letter to loved ones back at home? And here is a marbled effect on the wallpaper. Every bathroom is a jewel box. And this bedroom is a perfect example of different patterns working together. There's the marbled pattern in the bathroom, then a very fine purple stripe in the hall, the exuberant, wonderful fabric in the bedroom, and just behind me in the loo, there's an elegant 19th century wallpaper. And everything marries together perfectly. It is wonderful that your family breathed new life into it and put such yeah. beauty into this building, oh, yes. which will last for hundreds of years. Absolutely. It's a wonderful. Lot of things, you must a lot of, things, lot of things to do still when I walk today. <laughs> I see, you start looking with fresh eyes, but I, I see a lot of things which still need to be improved. So. <laughs> <laughs> and just when you've been seduced by the interior, thinking there can be nothing more beautiful in the world, you see the view. Straight onto the Palais de Pape. Through the slightly shimmering ancient glass. Imagine waking up here, ordering room service and having breakfast just next to the Palais de Pape, whilst thinking, hmm, what shall I do today? What shall I visit in Avignon? Which antique shops shall I go to? And after a day of exploring the beautiful city and the surrounding areas, there awaits the joy of coming back to La Mirande, perhaps for a drink in its stunning bar. Mummy, do you see this beautiful print of pine cones? I actually have a fragment of this fabric back at La Lande because I once found some, um, it was selling an offcut, and it's in the blue and white colourway with red pine cones, I think. And I've never seen it used in a room before, and here it's in the walls of the bar covering the entire bar. It's so pretty. So as soon as we get home, we must find that fabric and find somewhere beautiful to put it. Mm. And these two rooms still have the beautiful plafond à la française with lambris. And each piece of wood is decorated. And I want to do this when we get back to the Grand Salon. But I'm waiting until I've managed to find some beautiful panelling for the walls so that I can make sure that we then decorate the ceiling in the same style by using what looks like an 18th century bed alcove to create the bar. They've managed to create something fundamentally very modern, but that doesn't look in any way out of place in this room. It's ingenious. And once you have a delicious cocktail, you can take it through to the Red Salon. This room is always kept darker than the others. I think because it is naturally a darker room, there are only internal windows, there are no external windows. And instead of fighting that by trying to make it as light as possible, they've embraced it and they've made it this wonderful atmospheric room. Even the chandelier is kept constantly at a dim light. It's beautiful, it just sparkles at all hours of the day. I can't describe how romantic and peaceful it feels, especially after a day exploring the markets and the beautiful sights and the bright Avignon sunshine. To walk in here and have this refuge is just perfect. After cocktails, there's a choice of where to have dinner. You could go to their beautiful Michelin-starred restaurant where you could find yourself dining next to this 17th century Brussels tapestry. The Michelin Guide writes, these fine and tasty dishes extol the south of France, the produce of its land and its traditions. Delicious food in an elegant setting. 
Or you can venture down to the basement to the remains of the 14th century cardinal's home. And here, there is still the original kitchen. Diners here usually eat all together around that table, but because of COVID at the moment, the tables have been set around the rest of the basement. Extraordinarily, this cooker is 150 years old and they are still using it today. And you can see as we get closer that the fire is lit. There are flames in there. You can see oh, that it's oh, lit. Oh, merci. They do their cooking on the wood-fired stove. I know how much work that is from the one that we have at La Lande. It's going down into the bowels of the building wow. to the cab. Wow. <laughs> Oh, and it smells so nice. It smells like a cat. Yeah, it's a real cat, you know. Oh, I love it. These are the wines for drinking now, and these are the ones set aside. Oh, they're all labelled with the dates. We are in the area that the Cardinal's house would have been a courtyard, and through here, under these arches, were the stables. So we're going to go and eat next to the stables tonight. And after a huge dinner with local Chateauneuf du Pape wines, it's time to retire to our bedroom. This is the room that I'm sharing with my mother, and I can honestly say I can think of nowhere in the world I would rather be right now. Well, sadly, it's time for us to leave La Mirande now, to return to La Lande, but I'm returning filled with inspiration, with so many ideas for things that I can do back at home, and it's given me really a renewed enthusiasm. And that's what the wonderful thing about coming to hotels like this is, that you're not just going on holiday to see the local area, but really, the place that you're staying gives you new inspiration for your own life, and you can't ask for more than that from a hotel. A huge thank you to all of our patrons at Lalande who are making this vlog possible, especially our Dauphin and Dauphine of Lalande, Yedel and Ether, Alice, Alan, Anna, Brandon and John, Michael, Daniela, Dan, Banda, Lauren, Barnes, Vince, Barone, Denise, Behrens, Linda C, Bradley, Veronica, Castillo, Zoe, Dork, Sakura, Dennis, Jackie, Ellison, Nicholas W, Fairfax, Tracy, Ferrari, L Fine, Caroline Thurster, Brenda Gibbons, Abigail Grant, Brenda Harris, Delaine Holbrook, Kim Hasselhoff, David and Tong Henderson, Jacqueline Holmes, Helen Jacobs, Jimmy Kemp, David and Summer Lalande, Victoria Lapine, Janet Huff Lombard, Frank Martin, Kim Matlock, Meredith, Nina Messick, Robert Miller, Kathy Norrie, JC Award, MP, Maureen Palmer, Tamara Price, Tonya Renee, Yvonne and Peter Richards, RJB, Bettina Rojek, Hanny Ross, Elizabeth Scanlon, Sven Schreiber, Lisa Schultz, Jennifer Shanks, Patty Suhu, Susan Stevens, Jenny Stevenson, Sarah Thornton, Colleen Troyer, Jessica Walker, Brandy Walton, Laura Watkins, Greg Wood, David Young, and Ludovico Zordonazzo. And thank you to all of you.